Make any sense to you? Could you tell what in the world I was talking about? Well, don't feel bad. I really didn't know what I was talking about either. I kind of made that up. But then again, maybe you figured that out. You probably saw a little influence of the Three Stooges there. I did like them a lot growing up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Wise guy, eh? This little blurb here is, is going to be talking to you a little bit about music theory. But before we get to music theory, let me ask you a question. Uh, I asked this question to a, a class the other day, and I asked them, what constitutes language and communication? Well, one of my students said, oh, it's the alphabet. Okay, I, I, I see that. So then I looked at him and said, BDZ, that bit, ah, wah, mm, cap. They just started laughing. They said, no, Mr. Garwood, you need words. You got to take the alphabet and make words. I said, oh, words. Okay, like, uh, let's see. Boom, pop, red. Zilp, pop, zilch. Blap. They said, oh, Mr. Garwood, you need alphabet and words, and you need sentences. Oh, sentences. I took a ride in a piece of toast the other day, but I kind of I got wet when I dove into my glass of marshmallow juice. What? 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 Marsh? Mr. Garwood, that doesn't make any sense. One of the kids said, we got to be talking about the same thing. And believe it or not, a junior high student said, we got to be in the same context. Apparently his mother's really putting him to task on this vocabulary thing. I said, context? I mean, we got to be talking about the same thing. Well, yes, Mr. Garwood. So I went. And uh, how was your day today, Mr. Garwood? Oh, it was fine, thank you very much. I'm thinking that uh, uh, this is a little odd talking to myself like this. Well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be too too worried about it. You do it all the time. You've been talking to yourself for years. Well, this is true, but it does feel a little awkward, nonetheless. What just happened? I just had a conversation. We were all using words, letters. Um, we were using uh, sentences, and the sentences made sense because there was a context of a conversation going on there. And I talked, the other me listened, then the other me talked, and this me listened. There was some give and take going on. And it was a, it was a legitimate conversation. Well, guess what? Music theory is the language of music. It's how we talk to each other. But it's not enough just to have notes. That's our letters, so the alphabet. It's not enough just to have words. Those are like chords and short little sentences, short little groups of notes. It's not even enough to have alphabet words and sentences, which is longer phrases. All these sentences have got to be in the same context. They've got to be, have the same subject surrounding the same idea. Well, that context or that subject that all the notes, words, and letters surround is the key signature, the time signature. Um... Gosh, the clefs. In order for us to have a legitimate musical conversation and a piece of music, everything's got to be grouped around this one idea. Well, that's how music operates as a language within a sheet of music. But music also operates as a language between musicians, between you and me. I'm a guitar player. I'm a bassist. How can I possibly communicate to you, if you're a flautist, what I want you to play? Do I tell you, take your flute and play the note on the fourth fret? Yeah, I, that's, I get that look a lot. Or what if I said, I want you to do what the bagpipist is doing. Who knows what the bagpipist is doing? I don't think bagpipists know what bagpipists are doing. Which are my own rhymes, by the way. Do you know why bagpipists walk when they play? They're like you. They just want to get away from the noise. 
Just kidding, JK. Any bagpipers out there, I'm so sorry. Um, if I want to tell a drummer what I want him to do, am I going to say, go to your bass amp and turn the and scoop the mids and turn up the treble and down the bass? That doesn't make any sense to him. I have to be able to talk his language. He has to be able to understand my language. We need to have a common language that we can circle ourselves around that we, so we can communicate to each other. In Rome, the common language of the day was Greek. It united that it united that whole nation. United States is English. Used to be that united our whole nation. If a nation has a common language, then that nation is a cohesive and powerful thing. If we musicians can wrap ourselves around a common language, it's a powerful thing. We can do incredible things with each other. We'll be like a nation. We'll be like talking the same language. And you won't have to hear that gobbledygook like I started out with. We need music theory. So, as you can tell, this is a plug for, hey, sign up for the music theory class. It's going to be fun. I'm going to teach it. It's going to be more fun than a bucket of monkeys. Never seen a bucket of monkeys. I'm not even sure that would be fun. But this will be because we're going to be talking about all sorts of things. It's not going to be dry and dusty. You're already going to know some things about notes and, and key signatures and cluster stuff when you get here. I'm going to talk to you about how to put all that stuff together and make music happen and how you can talk to each other and how you can write music. It's going to be a great time. So do an old guy a favor. Sign up for music theory. Let's give it a try. If you don't like it, I'll probably curl up in a puddle and die. But I'll get through it because I love you guys. And I love music theory. And I love Mrs. Davis. And she's put a lot of work into this. So let's give it a shot see what we can come up with. See you at music theory class. Joyful noise. Bye-bye.